what's your name and where do you come from? Uh, my name's Chris Schwartz. I now am based here in Krakow, but actually I uh, come from a town called Brighton in England. Basically, I'm a refugee from London and chose to move down to Brighton. And how long have you been living in Krakow? Um, it depends what you mean by living. It's one of these difficult questions that sounds easy and isn't. I actually moved here, let me think, about two months ago, but I've been coming back and forth for many years. In fact, I first came here in 1981 as a photojournalist to document solidarity, and um, it wasn't the easiest time to be in Poland as a foreign journalist, but it was exciting and interesting, and I fell in love with Poland, and I've been coming back ever since. And uh, it, it, the, the question has to be baked. Um, why, have you, why have you left England behind and, and come here to Africa? Very, very simple, because I couldn't run this museum, this gallery, this project from England. It has to be run locally. And because I'm so passionate about running this project, whether I wanted to or not, I have to now live in Poland. Actually, it's a pleasure being here, but it was necessity rather than choice initially. And how long have you been planning this whole museum, this whole gallery? A surprisingly short period of time. Um, I wanted, let me think, January last year, which is 14 months away ago, I knew that I wanted to put on an international traveling exhibition based on this subject. And um, I spoke to people in Budapest and I knew I wanted an exhibition in Krakow. And I spoke to a few people and heard about this building and actually saw it in June last year and realized this would be a perfect building. And it took a while to sort out funding and I got let down by a few major trusts and foundations that led me to believe I'd get some money, which I didn't eventually get. And in actual fact, the funding wasn't secured until just after January, the end of January this year. Um, then I started commissioning a designer and came here seven, eight weeks ago, really, um, to set this up. So one thing led to another. I wanted an exhibition, they put an exhibition and you have a fantastic building like this, you want to have a cafe, and if you're having a cafe, you want to have a bookshop, then you think, hang on, this has to be done properly and seriously, so you set up an education project, and what started as a small exhibition has evolved into something very large, and in fact, I've got plans to expand. This is stage one, as far as I'm concerned. This whole project seems intensely personal. And I know you mentioned you were here in the early 80s yes. uh, for a career, for, for professionally. That's right. Um, but uh, without wanting to kind of pry too much into your personal life, um, could you tell us a little bit about your personal um, attachment to Poland and to the Jewish community? It's difficult to do that um, because they say it's highly personal, highly complex. I think once I began exploring Jewish history, once I began exploring Jewish culture, Jewish identity, particularly in relationship to Poland, I realized that there was a huge story here which is being not fully explained. And I'll explain what I mean by that. I'm afraid it's a long answer. Um, for so long now, we've been used to seeing photographs of Auschwitz, and most Auschwitz has visually become the symbol of the Holocaust. And there was a time when that made sense, when something like the Holocaust was seen quite rightly as an aberration within European history. And the people who survived, the very few who survived, numerically speaking, um, those survivors carried with them the memory of village life, of town life. They may have been doctors or lawyers or peasants or small artisans, etc. Uh, but they knew that Jewish life. Um, and therefore, what was concentrated on were the images, as I say, of Auschwitz, Birkenau, etc. Now most of those survivors are very, very elderly, those who are, haven't already died. And with them has gone the memory of Jewish life in Poland. With them has gone the memory of the art of the tombstone, for instance. And I think, therefore, to do the exhibition such as this one, Traces of Memory, which actually shows um, through documenting the physical remains of Jewish culture, it shows the enormity of the destruction, not just of a people, but also of a culture, that I just feel 
very strongly, it's really important to preserve that, to preserve that identity. It's good for the population of Poland, 1938-1939, was religiously Jewish, Polish and Jewish. It's important for the Jews to realize that, um, the, that in Poland they lived here for almost 800 years and it was the largest, most successful Jewish community at one time in the world, but until North America, until New York, etc., but certainly within Europe. And to start piecing together that story and telling it through photographs in a modern way and telling the history through photographs that can be found today is actually uh, an exciting challenge. And how do you, what's, how have you gauged the reception from the non-Jewish Polish community for this whole project and you it, as, as an individual as well? It's very hard because we've only been open two hours and um, we haven't had the visitors through. Come back and ask me in a month, I'll be able to tell you. All I can say is that um, the whole complexity of um, Polish anti-Semitism is something that is so enormous I don't want to get into it. But what I can explain is, as I say, I've been coming here for 10 years going to not just sophisticated Krakow, but to small towns and villages. And I turn up with someone who has, particularly at the beginning, very, very little Polish, and turning up in a foreign car and asking where the cemetery or this, that, or the, the old synagogue or something is. And all I've met with is unbelievable friendliness, unbelievable kindness, um, people explaining to me, you know, it's over the hill, turn left by this tree and right by somebody's farm, etc. And me looking completely incomprehensible, you know, with no comprehension of what they're saying. So either a grandmother or a kid or someone would go with me, show me where it is. Uh, people offered me a bed for the night, something to drink, exceptional warmth and friendliness. So. All I can honestly say is my own experience, which has been terribly positive. Some of the people we've been meeting, and one of the main questions that keeps recurring through the group that we're traveling with, is the um, remnant of anti-Semitism within um, Poland, the Polish people. And we've even heard, uh, although it was refuted quite strongly by some of the Polish people we've met, that there's ingrained anti-Semitism in the Polish psyche. Um, I think that's the biggest load of bullshit I've heard for a long time. I don't think there is ingrained Polish anti-Semitism in the Polish psyche. I just don't believe it. I suppose I have um, just one last question before I ask if anyone else wants to ask anything. Mm. Um, how long, you mentioned that you're going to go to take the travel with the exhibition. Yep. How long are you going to stay here and where else are you going to take it? Um, I don't know how long I'm going to stay here. I haven't got a clue. Can't answer that. It depends how this project goes, how successful it is, how interested people are in it. It also depends how I'm expanding it and I've got so many ideas which ones will I'll try and implement. I just can't tell you at the moment, I really don't know. Can I just ask, what, at what cost does it come to do something like this so passionately? One, exhaustion. Two, a positive cost is great excitement. And um, I think that come my three score years and ten or whatever I've got, I'll feel at least I've done something. 